Hello, fellow human. Hope you guys have a great day and let's read some r slash entitled parent stories. To the first one, Entitled Sister-in-Law Cuts My Child's Hair. This took place in 2011, so I don't remember the exact conversations. The cast is me, my lovely self, LP, life partner and the father of my child, S, son, EB, Entitled Tramp, Sister-in-Law, CB, EB's C-word boyfriend. Back in 2011, my partner, son and I, were at a really low point in our lives. We were homeless, living in a tiny RV, struggling but trying our hardest to better our situation. The RV eventually broke down in the middle of nowhere, and EB and CV offered to look after our son while we sorted things out. This was before we found out how much of a trap she really is. We were grateful and thinking of our child's well-being because he was like 1 years old at the time. The last bit of relevant information is that I was letting S baby hair grow out because I wanted to eventually braid it and cut it as a keepsake and EB knew this. Now for the actual story. As I mentioned before, EB and CB had offered to look after S while we stayed with RV and tried to fix it and we accepted it because we didn't want our baby to stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Baby S had beautiful dark curly hair that came to his shoulder that, as I said, I wanted to braid for a keepsake. Two days go by and they come back out to check on us and all of S hair was gone. It had been shaved off. I was hurt broken and seething. I walked up to EB and CB and our conversation went something like this. Me, like what did you do to S hair? EB, while giving me a smug grin, I cut it off. Me. Why did you do that? You knew I was saving it. EB, it was too much work to take care of. I didn't want to deal with it. CB, oh, uh, you're in no position to be complaining. We took S in out of the goodness of our hearts. What is done is done. Get over it. I had to let it go because at least son was safe. We eventually got the RV back into town, and then a few weeks later, we get into a shelter program for families and could take the son back. So, when we got him, my son was noticeably thinner and had a large poison oak rash. When asked about that, she complained that he ate too much and was a little piggy, so she only feed him when her daughter ate, and only as much as she ate. The rash was from CB touching son after wading through poison oak. Well, you've got every right to be mad, and I'm glad you were able to let it go for your own sake. On to the second story. Mom forces me to give my sister my car. A little backstory. I'm currently 29 and happily married. My wife's job has afforded me the ability to have good health care, including counseling for mental issues. We have been planning on having kids soon, and a few years ago, I thought it would be a good idea to start myself out. I've been doing really good with it and organizing a lot of my past. I always thought things weren't that bad for me and I had a good family and good life, but while sorting through the memories, my therapist and I have definitely identified trauma caused mostly by my mother. To put it simply, my younger sister is her favorite. I'm not sure if it's because she never wanted a boy or because she sees all men as evil. It's a little ironic because I grew up without religion and her dad always said I would go to hell because I'm not baptized, but she sees my gender as an original sin of sorts. Kinda screwed up. So about 6 years ago, I had just graduated from college and had my car repossessed since I was out of a job. My grandmother, mom's mom, had given me 2 grand to buy myself a car, partly as graduation gift and partly because I really needed help. Since my wife was still in school and hadn't actually started working yet, she's a military officer, I was trying to pay my own bills with no steady work and a degree that was useless. My dad, who has had a really rough time of causing it a lot of my family's financial hardships, put his godlike skills at buying and selling cars into helping me find a decent junker I could use. Since he didn't work, he spent a lot of time with me teaching me a lot of his trade so I could research cars, negotiate, and come away paying a good price for something that steers and stops. I ended up buying a 1998 Honda Accord for about like 800 bucks, a great deal from 1200 asking price. It had a broken windshield and the radio was missing out of it. Not to mention the door handle was broken on the driver's side so it was difficult to open. It turned out to be a great car. The engine and transmission were solid and I invested the rest of my grandma $2,000 into it to fix the windshield, buy a new stereo and buy a new handle. After a week of tinkering, I was super proud of this little trooper of a car. For what it was, I loved it. 
Fast forward a year or so, and I got married. My wife had bought a car for herself after graduation, and we were going to be stationed out east while she went for master's degree. I was excited to get out of my hometown. And now I realize I was more excited to get away from my mother. My mom was going to miss me, but she was excited for me. Until I told her that I was planning to bring my car out east with me. My sister still lived with my parents at the time and had no car, but she did have a job and often got rides from me, my parents, or her friends. My mom and dad shared a vehicle, but my dad didn't work so their transportation situation wasn't the worst. My mom didn't share this sentiment and started in on the hints that they could use my car. The city we were moving to would make two cars redundant and inconvenient, my car wouldn't make it out there anyway. All her standard manipulative moves to convince me what she wanted was the right thing and that my sister needed a car for work. For a while, I've pondered if this was a am I the butthole kind of a story, but just wait until the end. One day during one of the shuffles where I had to pick up my mom and sister at the same time because my dad was running errands, they cornered me in their driveway. Mom, your sister needs your car and you have no use for it. Me, well, I get that, but it is my car. I could use the money from selling it. Sister, I can't get to work without a car, and without you helping us, I'll get fired. Me, why not buy my car? I'll sell it to you for what I bought it for. It's worth way more now. Mom, well, that is not fair to us. We don't have that kind of money to spend. We need your help. It went on like this, each of them getting more frantic and not listening to my logic. I tried to defend myself and brought up how I'd been able to buy my car when I was 16 using my own money. I pointed out that if my sister saved rather than spent her money, 800 bucks wouldn't be that hard to come up with. They both got offended at the mere suggestion and both of them started to cry. Again, I wasn't very experienced with manipulation at the time, so it didn't come across as obvious that they were using appeals to emotion to sway me. After about an hour-long argument and them screaming at me, I relented. I told them my sister could have the car, and I gave her the title the next day. As the years passed, I figured, what the hell? It's my sister, and I love her, so why not help them out? It's not like I really needed the money anyway since my wife makes more than enough money. I even helped my sister with some repairs when I came to visit. I changed out the crappy aftermarket wheels with steel ones from the junkyard. I fixed the AC blower motor, changed the CV axles. That car was a good little trooper, and it stayed in the family, so whatever. That is until about a year ago. She called me one day and told me she sold it for $2,000 and turned around to buy herself a new car. I told her, good job and that she flipped it off for great profit, but I couldn't help but feel mad about it. After a while, processing the feelings, I realized why I was pissed. She had taken the charity I had given her, the hard work I had put in it to keep it driving and fix it up, and she had sold it? Making a 100% profit on it and using that money for herself. I never got a dime. It's like I threw that $2,000 for my grandmother away, like I took it and set fire to it six years ago. Only now do I realize this has been going on for years with my mom and sister. So many screwed up memories from my childhood, all of which revolved around me having something and it being taken away because my mom didn't know how to properly communicate or just wanted to make it fair for my sister who always lived the easy life. And yet, she's the one who has self-diagnosed depression and anxiety. I love them both and it makes it easier to know that I don't live near them. It's probably hyperbolic to say I was forced to give my car to my sister. It's more like I felt forced because a lot of family history. My family has always been blown apart since my father's family are from a foreign country. But my mom's family has always had really unhealthy relationships. She doesn't talk to her sister and only started talking to my grandmother after I finished high school. I have deep-seated fear for my children to grow up the way I did with family problems and people not speaking to each other. So because of this, I feel like I have to say yes to my mother to prevent history from repeating itself. Also, a few of you have asked about my father, so I figured I'd give more info. He was a very good salesman, like really good. Many years of experience and made our family very wealthy through elementary school and junior high. But then, financial troubles came in partly itself inflicted by my dad, but partly because of the housing bubble crash in 2008. He spiraled into depression after moving away from us to find better work and became addicted to painkillers. 
this drained any savings they had because his only thought was getting more pills to chase away the pain. Plus, his mother, again, who lived overseas, developed Alzheimer's and this only made things worse for him. He has been recovering for a long while and even got back into business after he got clean, but a series of crappy dealership owners have destroyed what little confidence he had left. The way I see it, after making my mom have a comfy life for so many years where she didn't work at all, he deserves the retirement he ruined. Oh, don't get me wrong, he's not a saint. But he's the only one that cheered for me and tried to make things truly fair between me and my sister. In a way, he's the only parent I truly love, so I probably make excuses for him. Yeah, man, your family sounds really toxic to me. Good job on moving. The third story, Entitlon threatens to sue me again. I'm 17 years old female and my cousin is 19 years old female. I go with Entitled On is EA and Entitled Cousin is EC. Okay, so let's get into the backstory. I've not had any updates on EA and EC. This has been great. I've been posting my art on my social media without any complaints. Until I started doing Mandela Stand as aesthetic drawings. The following conversation took place last night. EA, I thought I told you to stop drawing. You cannot post art that does not belong to you on socials. Me, uh, what? All of my art is original. The most I've done is look for inspiration from other artists, but I would never take someone's art. EA, that is a lie. You have stolen all of your drawings from EC. I do not want to pursue legal action against you. I will be speaking to your parents about this thought. Me, okay, go ahead and do that. I would like to see some of EC's art that I have stolen. I would also like to see the original drawings and not mine. When you send photos, we can actually talk. EC, Sends me the photos of Mandela's drawn in colored pencils. EC. Sends me pictures, miniature drawings that she has done. Me. Well, you are aware that you do not own the rights to drawing Mandela's, right? EC. Don't talk to me. Talk to my mom. EA. EC invented that art style. I would like to know why you call them Mandela's when EC calls them mirrors. You really need to look things up before trying to steal someone's ideas. Me, okay, so many things are wrong with what you just said. The final thing that I'm going to say on this until you talk to my parent is, please do some research on Mandela's. Also, the single Mandela's that I posted on my social media is in black and white marker and not colored pencils. Oh, I can't wait to read about your aunt and cousin get laughed out of every attorney office they walked into. The fourth story. Entitled mother demands my prize money. Where I worked, we would have a holiday party where we would play games to win money. The way it worked was everyone would win at least like 5 bucks. Well, one of the games was a speed round question type thing. Think Family Feud style. One of my coworkers who was playing against me loudly commented that she would freak me out and win. It's easy. I'm no competition, etc. She was so focused on making faces at me and trying to act tough. She completely missed the question. I answered correctly and she was out of the game. She loudly complained that it wasn't fair and sat sulking. I won the top prize and she came up to me, demanding I give her the money because she is a single mother and needed the money for Christmas gifts for her children. She then went on saying that I'm horrible, don't need that money, I must hit children, their Christmas is ruined, and it's all my fault, etc. She even tried to grab my pocket where my wallet was. Our boss told her to back off. She also tried to rally other workers against me. It didn't work and she was written up. For months, I was called a selfish, child-hating tramp by her for not giving her the money. And the best part is, my prize money amount was 40 bucks. Before all this, she was bragging about all the stuff she and her baby daddy bought for the children, including new phones and gaming consoles. So yeah, she didn't need it. My take on this is that the only reason why she was sulking and mad is because she was expecting her mind to win and everybody else to lose. That's it for today, fellow humans. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time.